The Dead Mines is this week's dungeon in Warcraft Rumble. Use it to upgrade your Black Rock leaders. This dungeon is going to be three separate encounters, first up against Mr. Smite, then Cookie, following it all up with Sneed. Each of these bosses is going to have its own special effect and their own unique map. They give three hero bonuses to your leader, giving you additional slots on your leader to be able to power up your other units. So we can start this off picking off the leader that we want to be picking. It'll then give us an option of three bonuses. Once your bonus is selected, you're going to go into Mr. Smite stage. Mr. Smite stage is relatively easy. There's a single path on the left and there's a forking path on the right. And then there's a secret tunnel here down the middle. So the tunnel down the middle, he's going to send units down and they're going to become stealthed and they get to go down all the way to basically right beside your barracks. So that's the thing to watch out for in this fight, is you need to be keeping up with who do you have to be able to deal with that incoming threat on your barracks. If you ignore the tunnel and you ignore the stealth units that he's putting around, they're going to get onto your base and absolutely shred it, or they're going to just kill off your backline units if you're not paying too much attention. You can send out a ranged unit down a line, and one of these guys is going to come out of stealth and wipe them out. So you need to be constantly paying attention to the status of the stealth units on the map. I like to send a pretty strong force up on the right side, going hard right around, and that's because the stealth units up at the top there are easy to take out with one single thing, like an ace pilot, some dragon whelps. All those things are able to just wipe all three of those stealth units out right away, and then you can get right onto the boss. The other side's a little bit harder because it does have one of the Torin there, and the Torin can kind of mess up your play. Smite himself knocks back enemies, so he's going to be hitting your team and knocking them back. That can really mess up your tanks, and then you might be able to get onto some squishy targets or throw your entire groove off with your team. On the harder difficulties, you are going to find you're constantly getting swarmed by some pretty high threat units, and you need to be managing base defense while still sending up teams to constantly put pressure onto Smite. High threat targets to worry about this one are the Charging Torin and the Huntsman with his bear. The Huntsman and Bear can definitely wipe out your base. He does so much healing onto that bear and they're able to take out your base if you don't have anything to be able to deal with it. And then the Charging Torrent is just such a pain. It is coming in behind you or in front of you, charging in and wiping out your high priority casters. And that can just really wipe out your team. So watching those things is really, really key to being able to take out this boss. Once Smite's down, you're gonna be dealing with Cookie. So Cookie's unique path, there is two paths on the left and one path on the right, with a splitter on the middle path that you're able to go left or right at at the end of it. There are three barrackses, and you're going to want to get control of as many of those as you can to stop them from getting units into you. His special effect here is that he summons a whole group of guys onto one of his two sides, and then he throws a potion on them, giving them a big buff, sending them all out at the same time. Major AoE effects is the key to this fight, you're going to want to be able to drop something like Blizzard, Chain Lightning, Arcane Blast, something like that onto them, even a Polymorph. Polymorph is really good also to be able to just eliminate that large threat that's coming at you all at once and then be able to wipe that out and get onto the boss. The boss himself is not particularly strong and one tank and a couple of DPS behind them is able to definitely chunk down his health pretty quickly. It's just you need to be able to deal with each of these separate waves every time they come out. If you don't, your entire base is definitely going to get swarmed here. Sneed is our final level here. So Sneed has two separate paths, and each of them has one of these big lightning panels on it. Whenever a unit touches the lightning panel, while the lightning panel is sparking, it's going to create a bunch of duplicates of them and send them over to this little spout here that's going to send those out. So you have to stop high priority targets or high difficulty targets from being on the panel when it's sparking up. If you don't, you're going to get swarmed by tanks like this. So if a big tank like a Molten Giant ends up on the panel, there's going to be so many of them and there's nothing you're going to be able to do. That's just so much health, you're just going to get wiped out. So the key to this was to have unbound swarm units. These unbound swarms can go onto the panel when it begins sparking and then make sure that you get just one of the little swarm elements into the fight rather than having to deal with a big threat target. So having things like Skeletal Party or even the Skeleton Duo is really, really good. To note, the Whelpling eggs do not count. They have to be Whelplings themselves for the pit system to pick them up. It does ignore the Whelpling eggs. Sneed himself does a big cleave that hits air and ground units in front of him. My strategy for this is to have your team go to the left and take out the left barracks, sending a miner up to the duplication system, and then your second miner doing the same thing. 
Sending two miners up there and getting duplicate miners is ideal using that spark system rather than ending up getting a big threat target. Once your team has taken both of the barracks with this strategy, they then begin to come around this side, drop a swarm on it to make sure you get a swarm unit and your entire party crashing in on the boss. This boss doesn't have a lot that it's able to do against that, and you should be able to wipe them up. It's all about smart handling of those panels. Once you wipe out all of these, you're able to get a decent bonus for your existing Blackrock teams, powering up their team bonus and making it so it's easier to clear out future ones. I hope this guide helped you figure out how to clear out the dead mines this week. I'm Zesty Fresh from Sons of Games, and we'll catch you guys next time.